You know guys, sometimes in your mind something doesn't work, and you're just thinking to yourself, why would I like that? I don't see why anyone would have any interest in that. But once you actually get the product yourself, once you actually start testing it and using it in your day-to-day -day life, everything starts to fall into place, and something that you just couldn't see before suddenly makes sense once it's truly there and helping you in your daily lives. The Apple Watch Series 5 did not give me that experience at all. This is literally exactly what I thought it was going to be. In fact, it was worse. I didn't think the Series 5 with its always on display was going to be very helpful, and I was right with my instinct. Yeah, so for today's video, and by the way, this may be the only video I do here on out for the Series 5. If I change my mind about it down the road, you'll get a follow-up video, but if my mind doesn't change, refer back to this one, because pretty sure everything I need to say about it can be summed up in today's vid. So let's begin. So, as you guys know, the Series 5 was, of course, not a very major upgrade at all from the Series 4. Very small changes, like they doubled up the storage option. No, they didn't double 64 gigs to 128 on the iPhone Pro, but they did decide to double the Series 4 16 gigabytes of storage to 32 gigs of storage on the Series 5, which may be helpful for people who install a ton of third-party apps, but that's not me. I don't do that. And, of course, they brought back some old finishes, like the ceramic models, and introduced the new one, Titanium, which I've tried on for myself. And while I thought titanium looked really really interesting on the website trying it on in person and comparing it to stainless steel And also comparing it to other Apple watches people have had in the past I gotta say titanium looks just incredibly similar to the aluminum models sure if you put them side by side You may notice a little bit of difference, but for the most part I thought Apple watch additions You know with the E was supposed to signify the flex was supposed to signify that hey you got the more expensive model That's why they include two watch bands and it does look look good. I'm not saying it's a bad looking watch or anything, but I thought the additions were meant to stand out. That's why I totally got the ceramic one, because that harsh white look that kind of looks like the same style of AirPods made that Apple Watch stand out, and you can notice it in a room if someone bought the ceramic edition, because that's the ultimate flex. You can notice it. That's a look and style you can't buy elsewhere. This, however, uh, I mean, it's slightly lighter than stainless steel, but really not by much, and for the most part, you're not even going to be able to tell the difference between this and an aluminum model model unless someone has a really trained eye and some of you may think it's stupid to just talk about the aesthetics but that's some of the biggest upgrades this year were the aesthetics so I'm just giving you my feedback on the titanium I personally would rather have my Apple watch match the stainless steel finish of my iPhone so that's why I'll be going back to my series 4 after I talk about this and use it for a while because honestly well it's cool that there's a watch made of titanium now and maybe if you want that more matte metallic finish but want the sapphire glass display the new series 5 has that option, but for the most part, yeah, it looks really awfully similar to the aluminum, so I don't imagine this one's going to be selling very well, and my prediction is they're not going to have a titanium version for the Series 6. I could be wrong, but I'm just assuming this is not going to sell that well. I wouldn't mind a ceramic watch in the future. That one, I think, would be okay, even if it didn't match my iPhone Pro, but regardless, I would rather have the stainless steel over this one. Now getting into the actual differences. There's the compass, which, you know, makes a ton of sense with a device that has GPS and cellular built into it that you would also need to know what direction north is. There are some apps that utilize it. There are some people out there, I understand, that may appreciate it, but yeah, for the most part, who cares that there's a compass? It's not something we carry around with us anymore. And now let's just get to the star of the show, the always-on display, which, as I've talked about in the past, has not been a feature I cared that too much for in other smartwatches, because for the most part, especially with the Apple Watch, it is really, really good at detecting when you need to look at the display and when you need to know what time it is. Even when you move the Series 4 just like slightly on your wrist in any type of circumstance, it will light up that watch face and the always on display with the Series 5 is kind of trying to fix a problem that I don't think really was there. It's really a common complaint for people I think that aren't using Apple watches. I'm not talking about everyone. I'm sure there's some of you that really wanted an always on display on your watch, but personally, it's really hard to appreciate this feature because the only time it's being utilized is when I'm not looking at the watch. 
and I kind of have to remind myself, oh yeah, intentionally like not tilt my wrist to see like, is it working? Yeah, okay. Yeah, always on display. It's it's doing its thing. But I still use my watch the exact same way. I know I haven't used it that extensively. Like this is my 24 hours in review, but I honestly don't think there's much to change because what else am I going to talk about other than the always on display, which I can't say there's been a ton of situations where I found it incredibly helpful. Mostly because the Series 4, which I've been using for a year, that display goes off like all the time, sometimes even when you don't want it to, to the point that it is such a rare occasion that I'm trying to look at my watch and for whatever reason the screen doesn't turn on. The accelerometer, the gyroscope inside the Series 4 is incredibly accurate, really really good at detecting when I want to look at the watch, and I'm also kind of somewhat getting annoyed with the always on display because there are times where I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, screen's on there, so uh, I want to go to the home screen now and look at some of my other watch OS apps, and I'll press the digital crown, but that doesn't take me to the home screen. It just lights up the watch because it technically wasn't all the way on yet. It was just partially on, giving me the time, but not actually taking me to the home screen. And so now it feels like there's actually an extra step because before, if there was anything on the Series 4 display, I knew, you know, the screen was on. I can press the digital crown, go home. Or I can tap on one of the complications and it will open that app. With this, I feel like the display is on because it's showing text very dimly. So I'll touch a complication, but that doesn't open it. So I kind of feel like half the time I'm having to press an extra time because the difference of the watch being on and the watch being off is not so night and day. Now it's like, well, it's displaying the time, but uh, the interaction part where you can tap complications and things, that's not activated yet. So you have to press it once and then press it again. Or of course you have to just keep using it and keep tilting your wrist the way you normally use your watch. In which case, why is it so helpful to have it always on display in the first place if you're going to have to keep tilting it anyway? It's not like the screen is always interactive, it's just constantly telling you one bit of information, which is the time, which I guess, you know, most watches are made to do. And I've even seen some people say the always on display has impacted their battery life. Now, this is 24 hours in, I'm not going to make a whole video updated on how the battery life changes, but I do find it a little bit bizarre that it's around 4.30 at the time I'm recording this video, and I charged it up 100% last night, I wake up at around 4 in the morning, so after 12 hours of use, I'm already at the 50% mark, which is still a great battery life. It's going to get me through the day fine, but in my experience, the Series 4 battery life lasted a little bit longer. Usually I could end the day and not even touch the 60%. I would still be in the 70% area because the Series 4, I guess, you know, doesn't have to constantly be displaying text on the screen. So I imagine even if I turn off the always on display, it will probably have just as good a battery life as the Series 4. It's not going to have some multi-day battery life that some people were anticipating. So overall, yeah, I mean, I know I'm the Apple sheep and everything, and I really love the new iPhones that came out, but as a whole, Series 5 is definitely a hard skip for me. I'm not going to be keeping this watch. Titanium is not my new favorite finish. I would much rather use the stainless steel. I feel like it contrasts better with other colors in your environment, and it also can match the phone you use, which to me is much more aesthetically pleasing. And honestly, even though I may buy and keep the Series 6 or the 7 when that comes out, maybe there's some more substantial upgrades, I think I'm going to turn off the always-on display next time I have a watch that's compatible with it because with smartwatches at least it, it kind of annoys me so yeah take that everyone who says I defend Apple no matter what no I don't I, I feel like the always on display was trying to fix a problem that didn't exist and was probably just help sales for people who hadn't bought an Apple watch yet and that was a common complaint but anyone who has extensively used an Apple watch will tell you that an always on display is probably not that helpful not that necessary because the regular Apple watches are very very good at detecting when you want them to turn on detecting your wrist motions it's not a real issue it's just a nitpicky thing that i guess the nitpickers now don't have to nitpick about so those are my day one impressions of the series 5 like i said at the beginning of this video i will keep you updated if my mind changes or i mess around with it and there's something i think is way better or something that i felt like i didn't touch on before but honestly i feel like everything i need to say about the series 5 i've said today so if you want to talk more about the series 5 or you enjoy using it feel free to hit me up over on twitter or join our discord and keep in mind people if you bought the series 5 and you like it i don't hate you that's fine it's just as good as the series 4 in fact it's the same price as before plus you have the option of turning it off anyway and if you want the always on display i guess it doesn't hurt too much to incorporate it so I'm not trying to bash the entire series 5 i'm just saying as a long time apple watch user this is not a feature i plan on utilizing that often this is your apple sheep here i'll see you guys in the next one